All right, Chuck Shaw, you two week 10 in the NFL. Um, special Thursday night recording as I will be in Happy Valley this Saturday. So the 10 of you that watch this, actually, we had like 170 views. It's a really? record for the for the NFL <laughs> yeah. show. So if any of you are there, and we're see, moving. See me. Tell, come over and say hi. Um, all right. So, um, Couple things off the top. Show was technically four and it was four and one, but technically three and one since we were both on the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Um, the only loser was Devonta Smith, which I had. You were two and out. Um, you were don't don't tell me. Oh, the Bears! I didn't even put the Bears in. It was such the right side. It was always the right side the entire game. Well, so credit to you for batting it. It, it survives by. Because Bajan was just turning the ball over left and right at the end. Mm-hmm. Saints shanked a field goal. That would have easily screwed it. But, yeah, had luck on my side there. Um, And, sorry, I'm debating right now. I saw, I saw you had the Panthers. I like the Panthers. No, not that nice. people are going to – I'm debating whether to bet them or not right now. It's um, weird. Because I feel like that's the side to be on. I don't like it. Yeah. You played the number. Yeah. I mean, Tyson Bajan favored by three and a half. I mean, I have Kent yeah, crazy. Right now, currently in basketball. I'm just not going to play it. Panthers <laughs> are going to cover now, definitely, because I'm not playing it. But, all right. Anyway, but speaking of the Panthers, too, they <laughs> they hold the Colts to, like, 100 yards. I ended up betting Carolina. They hold the Colts to, like, 100 yards. Don't – they lose by two scores Dude, because yeah. of two fixes. Um, and I'm trying to think of other things. Oh, I walked into the trap of – uh. I stepped in it with Seattle. Yeah. So I'll, so I'll get to six and a half, and I'm like, all right, like, might be time <laughs> to buy. Nope. No. No. Um, so really, those are my two things from last week that I kind of here, – here's the thing. I was in New York City to see the marathon, okay. so I didn't really get to see a ton, but those were like – the Eagles shouldn't have won also. That's a whole other thing, but yeah. – <laughs> um, uh, what are, what are your takeaways from? I was gonna say the Eagles definitely should have lost. That was my big thing, but also the Dolphins are just kind of exactly who I pers at least for me who we thought they were this whole time. Mm-hmm. I just don't think they can compete against the teams that actually matter, and it's only going to get harder if they have to go on the road in the AFC or in the playoffs to Kansas City, Baltimore, Cincinnati. Buffalo, wherever. I just don't see them winning that game at all. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And the, the the defense did look better. Now the yeah. game after the they first are improved. drive. Yeah. So but maybe just, just working through some things, but yeah, yeah no, no, I, I agree. I just have very low confidence. They're fun though. Mm-hmm. I'll give them that. They are fine. They're favored by ten against the Raiders next week. So <laughs> yeah. they, they will probably smoke them, and then uh, we'll yeah get into this whole cycle again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so week. 10. I'll actually get Survivor out of the way quick, just because okay. if anyone's been tailing my Survivor every week, we're still in it in week 10. I'm just going to run down who we, who I have played so far in order. Um, so we went Atlanta, Buffalo, Kansas City, San Francisco, Miami, LA Rams, Seattle Seahawks, Ravens, Browns. If you notice, there's a team that I did not say. It's the easiest bet this week. It's the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. If they lose to Tommy DeVito, that would be nuts. <laughs> then whatever. Then I'm out. But a lot of people probably use Dallas after they lost to Arizona. Yeah. So if you still have Dallas, it's kind of like an ace up our sleeve here. So you Dallas is the play this week in Survivor. Um, and then I saw that you had a play already in yeah, action. I have so one... take, take it away. Yeah. One side. I'm taking the Ravens minus six and a half at home against the Cleveland Browns. So the Browns, everyone knows about this defense by now. One of the best units in the league. First in EPA per play. Opponent success rate of only 33%. Second in opponent yards per play. So they're obviously elite, but they have a very hard time on the road. The opponent yards per play at home is 3.1. They go on the road that rises to 6.1. Allowing 10.2 points per game in their home stadium. On the road, it's 29.3. And the run game is what is kind of screwing them. They surrender 36 more rush yards per game 
on the road than they do at home this year. And the offensive line is not looking good at all right now. They've obviously not had Jack Conklin for the entire year. Jedrick Wills is now on IR. Dewan Jones is questionable. So it's never good when you're dealing with backups on the O-line, but especially against a Ravens defense who by many metrics is just as good as Cleveland. They're first in opponent yards per play, second in opponent EPA per play and success rate. And they love to run the ball, which is Cleveland's defense is weakness, especially on the road. So I think they're just going to be ground and pound the whole game. Cleveland's going to be all over the place trying to stop it. And the largest advantage for the Browns this year has been that defense. And that's just not going to happen this week. So I think they're going to struggle a lot going on the road in, in division. I'll take them, take the Ravens under a touchdown here. Yeah, I think that's, I'm not, I'm not taking Cleveland. So I'm not. I mean, it makes me a little nervous that Baltimore so hot. They're probably due for a stinker at some point, but I think this, they can get away with it this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have no confidence in the Browns offense whatsoever mm-hmm. to, Score enough, and the Ravens, you know, they PJ Walker had a bunch of turnovers the first time, which set up short yeah. fields, but they moved the ball well in Cleveland, so they should be able to find success. Yeah, probably the best team. Would you say best team in the NFL? Ravens, the yeah. hottest, but yeah. yeah, I would. I think they're the most definitely well rounded. It's probably either them. I still think San Francisco is up there, in my opinion. I don't think they're better than Baltimore, but. I think San Francisco is still going to compete till the end. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Speaking, good segue. Speaking of San Francisco, first bet I placed this week. I only have half a unit on it right now. Going to see where it goes. But Jacksonville Jaguars plus three hosting San Francisco 49ers. And really, this is, um, this is a spot where I think the Jags have become a little undervalued and Catching three at home, I think there's just too much respect for San Francisco when they are much more flawed than um, I think people are giving credit for. Now, they're great. They're top 22 guys, but they lack a ton of depth, and their secondary isn't very good. Trent Williams hasn't practiced this week. Um, Debo's coming back, which is huge for them. But if Trent Williams doesn't play, this is really going to help the Jags defense that um, has been – if you remember when we talked – week one, one of the reasons that I was back in the Colts is I thought the Jags defense wasn't very good. They have been everything that, you know, Jags fans could have ever hoped for. They're third in DVOA. Um, they're going to get back uh, Andre Sisko and Tyson Campbell this week, uh, which is going to really help the secondary. And um, just as far as San Francisco, like they're on, on their defense, We've seen it the past couple weeks that they've played is that they, you can throw on them. There's no resistance. Um, I don't think Chase Young is really a huge addition. He wasn't very good with Washington. He's very up or down. So I think that acquisition is a little overrated. Um, So I think the Jags have a lot of success throwing and getting three at home with a team of six and two. And I had this stat here that they, um, so they've won five in a row. They've trailed for a total of seven minutes, and it's all really? against team 500 or better right now. So, like, they're playing really well against really good teams. Good teams. And this is one yeah. of the few games, this is one of the few games, too, where I think there might be a coaching advantage again, like going against the 49ers. Mm-hmm. I think Doug Peterson's a better coach than Kyle Shannon. Shanahan hasn't been very good in his career as a favorite. And I think Brock Purdy's getting a little exposed as well. He's not. And now may, maybe, you know, they come out, they win 27-20 or whatever the case, cover this number. You know, they have Debo back, so that's huge. Like, okay, maybe he just – they were just missing a huge piece of their offense, missing Trent Williams and Debo. Or maybe Brock Purdy's just turning into the seventh-round pick. Round maybe pick. he's not a franchise quarterback. Yeah. Um, as more tape comes out, you can figure him out, so – yeah, I'll I'll take the points with the Jags. If this get leaks to three and a half, then I'll add more to it. I might add more to it at three, but um, yeah, I, I'll take take the home dog here. I like that, even though it kind of goes against what I just said about the Four ers But I, I think getting a field goal there is definitely the uh, the right number to be on. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I still think the 49ers are good, and yeah. it's just, I don't know, they're, there's something, maybe Brock Purdy had like two straight concussions, like how healthy is he really, yeah. too? Like he got into protocol and out of protocol in the same week. Two days. <laughs> so, so who knows like how, you know, he is mentally. Yeah. Also, like it's a bit of a concern. Um. All right. So do you have a second that you're looking at? I have a prop for Monday night. I don't know if you want to do um any of your other Sunday bets first. Well, I have a Monday. Really? Bet. I do. <laughs> I took uh Denver Broncos plus seven and a half okay. against the Bills. And really, this is just, I think the Bills are being priced like the preseason Bills. And it hasn't been taken into account that this team is just not that good. Yeah. Um, and also, I think that there's still a stink about Denver because they let up 70 to Miami. When in reality, if you look at this team the past um, couple weeks, they gave up, let's see, 19 plus 17, it's 36 plus 9, 45. Their, their, their defense has given up 15 points a game their last three, and two of those games were against Kansas City. Um, so I think the defense has turned a corner. They had a bye, which I think is even going to help them more. Um, and, like, the Bills, to be able to cover seven and a half, when their defense is as bad as it is, like Denver should be able to run on them. Um, and they've kind of turned into a team with, under Sean McDermott where, and we saw it against the Bucks. like they get up and then they take their foot off the gas and they try to take the air out of the ball. Mm-hmm. And it leaves them open to a back door if that's something that we run into. But Denver should be able to play, should be able to defend them well. Like Josh Allen isn't, a new challenge that Patrick Mahomes wasn't who they yeah. did really well against. And it's just not a great Bills team. So I think they stay. So the Bill the Bills haven't shown outside of that Miami game that they're capable of just blowing teams out. Yeah. And now and that would they were way healthier then than they are now. Yeah. I don't see that spread getting below seven. So I would definitely be on Denver side there. But my prop is a Bills player, the other only good one, and Stefan Diggs. I like his over receiving yards. I've seen it kind of all over the place. There's some books that don't have it. Some have it at 85 and a half, which I like it at that number. My little projections got him at 100. So I might sprinkle the 100 plus there. But like you said earlier, the Dolphins defense, some of that number. Well, the reason for the 100-yard projection is because their defense, especially on the road, is violent. Their numbers are pretty far skewed because of that Miami game. Like, they're allowing 252 pass yards per game, and on the road, it's 323. So it's definitely not the clearest projection. But they do struggle against that number one receiver, and it's been happening all year. Tyreek Hill put 157. DJ Moore put up 131. Travis Kelsey put up 124. So I think if anybody on that offense gets gets things together, it's going to be Stefan Diggs, at least to be just all over the field, whether or not he finds the end zone or not. I'll take him and get a few catches, rack up those yards. It's one of my favorite props of the week. Yeah, I mean, he's the only one on that team that you can trust. Yeah. So I, I mean, dude's it's, like it's quietly good. behind, like, right behind A.J. Brown and Tyree Kill in terms of production this year. Just hasn't really been noticed as much because the Bills have just been shitting all over the sims. Mm-hmm. Um, my last one is Houston Texans plus seven. Uh, like I, got it. It minus one, I got it minus 120. It's mostly at six and a half now if you want to, you know. I So you, you, this is why I, I think this is a worthwhile show to – consume my philosophy at least for this like minus 120 is kind of cheap to get a key number like that what do you do you prescribe to that as well yeah totally uh, yeah so i would say yeah let's buy if you can buy cheap to 120 um do that to get seven but it kind of seems there, so a couple things i think the bills i think the Bengals are back but Agreed. they haven't really put like four quarters of offense together. Like last week they had 21 in the first half. They finished with 24. 24. Um, and again, like the Bills 
aren't a defense that should you know, be holding teams like the Bengals three points and a half. Um, I, I also normally I would be fading CJ Stroud after he throws for 500 yards, but I actually think that he might just be that good. And yeah. um, like an, a, a performance like that won't over like inflate his ego or anything. I think he's just going to go out and just keep producing. Obviously, he's not going to do 500 yards again, but he's going to go out and he can go into a road environment like this and play well. I also think the Bengals. Um, well, I, I think that the, uh, the, as far as like DVOA goes, these teams are way closer. I think than the spread indicates this is, I, I, again, I think this is like the perception of the Texans is that they're just like, you know, okay. At best team, the Bengals are a Super Bowl contender, which I think the Bengals are a Super Bowl contender, but to beat a team by over seven in the NFL, like you have to really, you have to really stomp them. And Bengals 11th in DVOA, Houston's 13th. You can say that Houston's defense, which is 18th, is the weakness of the team, but T. Higgins didn't practice today. Jamar Chase has been limited. So, yeah, as good as Joe Burrow is, like the Bengals can't run the ball. And if he's missing, T. Higgins, I'm assuming, is not going to play. If Jamar yeah, Chase is I'm pretty sure he's limited. Out, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, he was in, oh really? Okay. So, if T. Higgins is out. Um, then, and Jamar Chase is limited or not himself. Like Burrow isn't. No one in the NFL at quarterback is good enough to overcome losing players like that. You just become so much easier, especially when you can't run the ball and your offensive line isn't very good. Yeah. So to be able to cover seven just feels like a tall task. And also, you know, they're the Bengals could just hold limit Chase's action just because they have Baltimore next week. So that game's way bigger for them yeah. than playing Houston. For Houston, this game's way bigger than it is for Cincinnati. So maybe a little motivational. Edge. This is a huge measuring stick now for um, for Houston and Cincinnati coming off a big prompt time win. So I, I think it's just created some value here where if you get the seven, why not play it? Yeah, I'm, like you said about the Ravens coming up, I'm pretty sure everybody besides the Ravens is five and three in that division. So those games – are massive from here on out. So I could totally see. And they, they already lost to them. So. Yeah. And it's already a little, little look ahead that I don't want to say they're tossing this game, but they might keep Jamar Chase out mm-hmm. as a precaution. Yeah. Um, all right. So do you have a third you're looking at or just sticking with it? I ask you this every week and you always just have two, but I might as well <laughs> ask. Uh, the only other one, I was kind of – it was something that was intriguing. I was kind of looking at the Chargers at home against the Lions. I but agree. I really dove into it enough to provide a reasonable explanation for as to why. Yeah, maybe, maybe one. Also, kind of leaning towards Vikings plus three against the Saints. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I was considering, and I liked your thing with the Ravens. I was considering just teasing the Ravens down and finding a dance partner. The Vikings might be that. Yeah. I'm the only thing that I'm scared of, and I don't know if this is like dumb, but like Josh Dobbs is one in nine straight up as a starter. Yeah. So like he like he did come in relief and some it was just like Baker Mayfield last year. Mm-hmm. What if he like he's not good. Like Josh Dobbs is not a good football player. <laughs> Like, it's awesome what he's done, and, like, he's a good backup, but he's still not. Yeah. Like, if the Vikings were to get blown out, would I be sitting around being like, I can't believe that just happened? You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But, like, they could win the game, too. Because yeah. who, who are the Saints to be favored on the road? Favorite. Yeah, I totally agree. And I saw something that, like, apparently Derek Carr is, I don't know what the numbers were, but he's horrible against the Blitz when it comes to throwing the ball, and the Vikings just send house often. So mm-hmm. that could be a big factor uh-huh. there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I agree with you with the Chargers. I'm just let it keep going up. It opened one and a half. So like that line stinks to begin with. So now we're getting additional value there. Um. I think Green Bay at three and a half. If that comes back, or if you can buy it cheap, like 
Kenny Pickett line three and a half. That's... It sucks that we have to back Green Bay on the road, but <laughs> yeah. but I think that might be a good play. If I bet that Kenny Pickett would find something in him on the last drive, they'd win like fourteen to ten. Some bullshit. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, and then I kind of want to bet Atlanta. This might be Arthur Smith's last stand. That's true. I didn't even really think about that. He has an, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely has an, uh He's made some questionable moves and said some questionable things recently. Mm-hmm. So it's a shame because I liked him too. Yeah, and now it's now it's uh, it's got. I actually like that he was like, "Fuck your fantasy team, I'm winning." But I think that was when <laughs> he was like four and two. Now he's four and five. Yeah, so it doesn't really look as good now. <laughs> um, now it's just he's out some arsenal so That's just that's just yeah. Kind of how that goes. Yeah, it's messy. Um, all right, so to sum that up, uh, you're on the Ravens and Stefan digged over what was the number? It was I'm seeing 85 and a half. So 85 and a half. Stefan digs over 85 and a half. And then I am on the Houston Texans plus seven, the Jacksonville Jaguars plus three, and the Denver Broncos plus seven and a half. Um okay. Um, money line around Robin was shit last week. We went one and four. <laughs> um, <laughs> we went. Yeah, Bear, Bears lost. Carolina lost. Vegas won. Who was that? Was that you who had Vegas? I no, think wait, so. Or was that me? It was no, something it was we both you. we like both were on the same page, but I forgot kind of yeah. who said it. Which I that was another one, and I think it was. I'm just gonna blame it on being in New York, and my head wasn't in in the game. I never even bet that. Really, but also, yeah, I, I never ended up placing it. Um, that in Chicago, but I decided to bet Seattle. I was just yeah. not in the right headspace, <laughs> walking around New York City. My calves burned for days. Um, and yeah, Buffalo lost, and Atlanta lost. Um, okay, so yeah, you're you get you get three. So cool. First one, I'm going Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, I like that. Will Levis on the road. I'm trying to find ways to fade Will Levis, and I just I think that's a great one. I just really don't like Todd Bowles. Yeah, it's my problem. But it's like the um, Buccaneers have just been getting so, like last week, unlucky. Mm-hmm. So they had a chance to beat the Bills, had a chance to beat the Falcons. So the last three weeks they've been hanging on right there. Yeah. Um, I will take the Green Bay Packers. So we got the Bays, both of the Bays. Hmm. Where to go to? I'm going to take the Colts in Germany. Okay. Um, uh, Jacksonville. I like how this one's coming together. Mm-hmm. You know what? This is this could be the one that either ruins it or makes it a five for five. I'm going to take the New York Jets. Okay. So okay. So this is another one. Where I've been, I've just been kind of waiting. And this kind of reminds me of last year. Um, and I feel like there, and you can step in if I'm way off on this. I feel like there's three teams that I've kind of just read well this year the Eagles, Jets, and Chiefs. Like I feel like I've just kind of consistently been, yeah. had my finger on the pulse of them. I, this feels like a great Jets spot. I agree. I'm so concerned that their offensive line is so bad right now. Like, they're on, like, their fourth center. Yeah. Like, they're just rotating all these random dudes in. And it kind of reminds me of last year where around this time, they were, like, five and three or five and two last year, and then they lost so many in a row. Yeah. And, like, they just couldn't do anything on offense. It feels like that's starting to happen again. I could I could see that concern. It's just Zach Wilson is the definition 
of just an experience. But the last two games were just total duds. I think this is a good time. Raiders are obviously coming off probably their biggest high. You would have thought they won the Super Bowl with uh, what they were doing in that locker room. I think it's mm-hmm. not necessarily a letdown spot. But I think Zach Wilson is still capable of winning this game. Mm-hmm. They had the best unit on the field is that defense. So yeah. that always gives me confidence. It, it keeps them in it. Even yeah. like last week, even against the Chargers, like that defense, that like scoreboard doesn't say it, but like they played well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll probably end up on the Jets, but they scare me. They scare me right now. It, it is, you're right. It's the perfect sell high on the Raiders, mm-hmm. buy low on the Jets. The Jets, yeah. It's still Aiden O'Connell starting. Mm-hmm. So he, how much better is he than Zach Wilson? Coin flip at best. They did just get super unlucky what they held the charge of like 160 yards and lost yeah. by 21. <laughs> Herbert, yeah, Herbert threw for like 120 something. Um, Nuts. All right, so ra- round robin Tampa, Green Bay, Indy, Jacksonville, New York Jets. I like that Jets pick. It's a good pick. Um, all right, next week we discussed this. Well, we didn't discuss it over text. I just sent you a text and you didn't respond. <laughs> yeah, I meant to respond. But I was I was a uh-huh. little busy. Um, <laughs> I mean, Patrick Mahomes under a field goal at home <laughs> against one of the luckiest teams in the NFL. You gotta you gotta take it. The only thing with this matchup where it can get dice is the Eagles can run the ball, mm-hmm. and that's the Chiefs' biggest weakness. Yeah. But right. if there's a you can make the argument both ways. The Eagles secondary finally has a break because they're not playing any receivers that are worth anything. But also, this could be Chiefs receivers running open all day. They get killed by like Travis Kelsey could have a buck fifty. Yeah, easy. Next week. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I don't think I'd touch the Eagles at all. Yeah. I think if it's a field goal or less, I'm definitely Chiefs. If it gets above, I might just not bet it. But mm-hmm. I think Chiefs are definitely yeah. the side to be on there. What else? What else? What else? Uh, if the Jags win, I kind of like Tennessee against them. Let that thing keep going up. Yeah. That's six right now. Browns. Yeah. Maybe even Panthers plus nine. I don't. I don't hate that. That'll probably keep climbing too. To get to ten, by kick off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially if Dallas wins by a hundred this week. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Those are kind of, kind of it. Um. I mean Miami. Probably smoke the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not a super enticing slate, but I'm sure we'll find something. Yeah, we always do. (laughs) We always do. All right, so. Uh, wrap of the show, Survivor, Dallas Cowboys, Round Robin, Tampa, Green Bay, Indy, uh, Jacksonville, the New York Jets. Then you're on Stephon Diggs over receiving yards, um, as well as the Baltimore Ravens minus six and a half. I'm on Texans plus seven, Broncos plus seven and a half, and the Jags plus three. That's Let's sweep the board. Sweep. Let's give the people, let's give the people what they want. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. We'll see you guys next week for week 11.